Let us rise together as we worship the living God. Living God, in our baptism, you call us to proclaim your purposes and love for your coming kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles and the prophets that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in the circumstances of our life. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Let us pray. O oh God, we worship and praise you for your gift of redemption. In Christ, you chose us before the world was created. You sent him to cleanse us of all our unrighteousness. He sanctified himself for us that we should be blameless. Your grace surrounds us and your peace dwells within us. Through Christ, you calls us names us as your chosen people. We gather to praise you for your glorious grace. Remember that we have redemption through Christ's sacrifice on our behalf. We have forgiveness of sins according to the riches of God's grace. For God has made known to us in all wisdom and insight and mystery of God's will. To unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. Therein lies our assurance of pardon. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, from you come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fears of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. You be seated. I'd like to invite the children to come forward for our time together here. How are you? Good. You can have a seat right up here. Good to see you all. Good to see you. Hey, I know you. How are you? Okay. <laughs> How are you all doing today? Good. Good. Still enjoying your summer? Yeah, a little bit of rain, but you know what? That won't damper things and make it cooler. And then when the sun comes out, you'll be ready to jump in the pool again, right? Or do something nice um, outside. Listen, um, can you see my stole from where you are? Can you see that? What do you see on this stole? Children, people, yes. Are they, like, do they look all the same? No, they don't, do they? Do they look like they might be children from all different places, right? From around the globe, right? And that's sometimes we, we want to remember that as the people of God, God calls us and the whole world. When we do mission, we go to the youth gathering, we do some other things, we learn that, wow, God is the God of the whole world and the universe, right? So I like to wear this stole, um, especially as I, I recently got it as an as a ordination gift, a reminder of my ordination, which means uh, a call to be a pastor, an ordained pastor. But do you know each one of you are called by God in a very special way? Did you know that? Yes, you are. You are. It's through your baptism. All of us, children of God here, have been called through what Jesus did for us, his life, death, and resurrection. As we go down into those waters and raise up, we may not remember it if we were really little, but we want to remember every day that just like we remember our birthday, right, that we are called through our baptism as children of God to be light and life and hope in the world. Because sometimes, do you think our world needs that? Do you think? Sometimes, yeah. A lot of times, right? We need that. So I wanted to share with you that, of course, Jesus in Scripture tells us he wanted the children to come to him, okay? He wanted the children to come, and he says, you know, unless you become his children, you can't enter the kingdom of God. You have open hearts to learn about Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit, okay? So we want to keep learning, right? We're not done learning. What grade are you guys in? going into third. This is Skylar going into third, sixth, fourth, second, fourth, second. Okay, we're not done learning yet, right? And even life gives us opportunities to learn. So we want to be open to what God has for us because you are very, very important to God's love and plan. You, each of you individually and as a whole here at St. Matthew, and when you look around, we're family, right? You know, you have like extra grandpas and grandmas and moms and dads and brothers and sisters, all of us together, right? So we are excited about what God has for us. In Ephesians, we're told, let's listen to this, uh, because the part of it says, God desired us for adoption as his children through Jesus, according to his good pleasure. He was so happy about this and the praise and the glorious grace that he calls us to, and the love that he calls us to. So it says in the beginning, blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's blessed us with so many things and so many across the globe and in the universe. We serve a big God. Are you happy about that? 
Yeah, I think we're going to hear more about that from the youth gathering today, too. But let's share a word of prayer, and then I have a little something for you if you want it, okay? Just a little something. It's sort of fruit, fruit snacks. Is that okay, parents? (laughs) Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you that you love us so much. You call us as your very own sons and daughters. Help us to unpack what that really means for us, but just to know, even as a child, we can open our hearts to you and learn what it means to follow you in the day and the time in which we live today. So we thank you for that and that you are a living God in our midst. Thank you that we have been baptized into Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. And that brings us to new life for now and for the future. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Here, if you would like one, you're welcome to as you go. Everybody get one? Skylar? You don't want one? Wow. Daddy, what'd you do? <laughs> you, you sure? You can take one. Okay, thanks. <laughs> the first reading comes from the seventh chapter of Amos. This is what the Lord God showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people, Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste, and I will rise against the house of Jerobeam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jerobeam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jerobeam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from the land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. Psalm 85 is to be read responsibly. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. The second lesson comes from Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, He has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven, and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him, you, in him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit, 
This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemptions as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. From the sixth chapter. King Herod heard of the disciples preaching for Jesus' name and had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. The Gospel of our Lord. You, May be seated. Please pray with me, if you will. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight. Lord, who is our strength and our very life. Amen. Today, we're gathered together, and we are fortunate to hear soon from our youth and their leaders and about the youth gathering. As we gather, we hear this living word of God that comes to us throughout the lessons. And some of it today, what we hear in our lessons in Amos and the Gospel, are harsh words, if you will. They're more harsh than, than we're used to on a, on a Sunday morning. But we're hearing about building a foundation in Amos, with that plumb line being one that is, we hope, straight, and when it's not, God is going to make it straight. The cro crooked places, that which is, not, is broken, God will bring to fullness. But he needed someone like Amos to raise up within the nation. And so we take a quick look here at Amos and his, his words and think about him as a prophet, for you know, it was never popular to be a prophet. Most of us know that, right? For the prophets, it was difficult because during times of peace or what might be seen like peace complacency, there would be a prophet sent forth to share a word of concern or maybe warning to the people, not to be too complacent and just to sit back and think things are all okay but to look to God, to know God, and to follow God. In times when there was suffering and exile, there would be a prophet. Thankfully, God raised a prophet, a word of comfort, a word of hope, a word, a living word, that would feed the people's hearts. Well, Amos wasn't one that grew up in the temple or in the royal courts. He was one who worked with his hands. He rolled up his sleeves and he was a herdsman. He was one who was the dresser of sycamore trees. 
He was, if you will, a farmer. He was out in the fields. And he said, who, me? How am I to go and to speak this word? Sometimes we feel like that. I think as youth, as people of God, baptized believers, we can feel like that. Who are we to share a word that God gives us? First of all, we cultivate that time in our hearts and our lives where we can hear the living word and the living God speak to us. And when we sense that and God en enables us to move forward, we share that word. For Amos, he was concerned through God's compassion, concerned about those who were oppressed in society. And so he was speaking to the ruling class. He was, in some ways, the nation's conscience in a position, giving the position of power and influence for some in the nation, taking advantage, ill treatment of those who could not defend themselves. And so Amos is one as that. We might want to take a closer look at times when we have a chance to, to look at that whole book of Amos. So we have that message along with the message in the gospel today. And the concern for the powers that be in the gospel for Herod and the others was that Jesus was being lifted up and there was something about this Jesus. John the Baptist they thought they had taken care of. But now Jesus was active and involved in the world. He was healing people. He was speaking words of strength and power to those who might have felt weak. In essence, the message of the coming kingdom that Jesus was proclaiming threatened the powers of this world. And so they were shaking. They needed to do something about it. What was it? And so then the gospel goes into all this explanation of maybe it's another prophet. Maybe it's John the Baptist who was raised again. They were curious. They needed to know more about the power of this Jesus and the strength and the compassion and love and what was moving those people toward him. So today, let us remember God's word truly is powerful and living as it comes to us in scripture we hear the great promises in the psalm 85 and also in the epistle today to continue to live as the people of god let us know that as we connect with that word of god that is living and powerful it changes us and we through our baptism are able and enabled to do what god calls us to do with hope and life and love in the world around us. So I'm grateful today that we get to hear more about what changed these young people and the interaction that they've had with the youth gathering. Let us welcome them as they share their words with us. I'm going to talk about the little things that made the gathering quite enjoyable. One of the first things is uh, clothespins. It is a tradition for all gatherings. I don't know how far back it goes, but it's been happening for the two years I've gone. But what it is, you take a clothespin and you write scripture or a little phrase on it. And then on the other side, you put where you're from, your church, state, or like that. And then when you're in mass crowds or on a bus with other people, Make sure you, you want to target kids that are also there for the gathering. And what you do, you sneak up behind them and you try to clip it on them like the brim of their hat or their backpack, something like that. And when they get to where they're going or when they get back to their hotel at the end of the day, they take their bag off and they look and they get to see uh, where the clothespins have all come from. You get them from California, Alaska, Minnesota, down in Florida. You get to see where people are coming all around from to the gathering. But you just, you just got to be sneaky, though, because if you get caught, it doesn't work very well. 
And there are times I've seen people take about five minutes just to get one person. I've done that myself. Another thing I enjoyed was meeting, meeting new people. You, you meet people from everywhere, all over the country. You meet them on the metro train when there are hundreds of kids in one car packed going to the stadium ready for the mass gathering at, in the evening. You meet them on the buses and you meet them in lines and you meet them at your service projects throughout the week. You just meet them everywhere. I now have some friends from Minnesota and South Dakota and I'm now able to stay in contact with them because of social media. But one of the greatest things I enjoyed is the mass movement of all 30,000 kids plus. It mainly happens when we're going into the stadium and exiting the stadium. Mainly when we're exiting the stadium, it's just a mad rush because you want to be the first ones to the buses and trains so you can get back to your hotel first and have plenty of time to sleep. But when that happens, there are people who will, one person can just start breaking out in song and other people join in and it just keeps going. It's really great. And one of the things I saw is, where I saw a lot of youth was we went to NASA the day before we started. I didn't get to go on one of the tours because the line was so long because there were, I don't know how many kids there. There were a lot. And we were standing in line at least two hours and it was going to be at least another hour till we got on the train to see the tour. But I do remember Detroit three years ago when I was up there for a gathering. We would all 30,000 kids would exit the stadium and Detroit had, would shut down one street about a half mile long and 30,000 kids would go down that street to meet their buses to take them out of the city and go to their hotels. And since it was Detroit, 30,000 kids would break into Don't Stop Believing by Journey. That was by far one of my greatest memories. So thank you. Um, I would like to begin by thanking all of you for the support you have given to make the opportunity possible for me to attend the gathering in Houston. And I would also like to thank anyone who gave towards the book collection. Um, when we turned in the books to the book collection, I began to realize why the common theme of the gathering was this changes everything. When I saw how many books were collected, I started to understand how many lives would be changed because and during the gathering. For our service learning day, we went to a daycare that was held for children living in an apartment complex in which some of the children came from broken families. Once we got there, we interacted with the kids and passed out books. During the service learning day, I had learned that not all kids are as fortunate as I am, and I started to realize some of the small things that I take for granted, such as the many ways I am easily able to access a book. Uh, one of my favorite speeches from the week was given by Aaron Fuller, and his topic of discussion was how God's love changes everything. He lived by the model of, motto of courage and faith, commitment to others. Aaron Fuller was, has worked as a Navy chaplain, wrestling coach, and a pastor, and throughout his three jobs, he spent his time listening to people as they were going through hard times. He taught that throughout hard times in life, no matter how alone we feel, God and others are always there to love us. Overall, going to the gathering was a great experience for me. It taught me many things about having a relationship with God that I had never thought about before and how God can change everything. I would like to thank the church for allowing us to go to Houston for the 2018 National Youth Gathering. It was a wonderful experience to go there to the gathering, and I welcome the next group of youth from this church to go to the next one. Lots of speakers had inspiring stories about how God touched their lives. The speakers at our mass gatherings at the end of each day gave me inspiration that God is always here. They would most of the time talk about how they had to deal with their hard past lives. Some had to deal with drug addiction, blindness, depression, and many more. Most of the speakers said that they had a hard time in their life, they would despise God and say that they were just done with everything and they just were ready to give up. Then one day God would come to them and tell them that he's always there for them and that 
your life is going to be good in the end. And it just amazes me that how they overcame their hardships and they were able to have a good life for themselves. I've learned that as in the second lesson, that through him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses through his grace. My love and faithfulness was through the words of scriptures and my experience of the gathering will stay with me now and forever. Thank you. Each day that we were there, our group, we had joined in with St. Luke's Church in Rain Spring. We were assigned to do different days. We've heard about the service day. We were also at Synod Day, which was a smaller gathering within the huge gathering of 30,000 youth. So we gathered within our own synod and worshiped and got to know people within our own area. Another day that we spent there was with the Interactive Learning Center. And this was just a great experience for the kids. They had many activities, physical activities they could do, like zip lining, rock climbing, rock wall climbing, and things like that. But also, there were things to make them think. One of the things I went through was Peace Not Walls. And it was just talked about the Palestine Lutherans and what difficulties they're having over there. There were opportunities to assemble bags for people that needed just basic toiletries. There was a place where you could sit down and color. They were making a periodic table, and they were just coloring in the different letters and numbers, or the alphabet that could be hung in a classroom somewhere and help out students learn. There were many different ways that the kids could engage and learn try to determine what their call might be and how that they can serve God. Each day there was a different theme. The first one was God's call. The second day was God's love, God's grace, God's hope. Each night when we gathered at the NRG Stadium, which is where the, um, the Houston Texans play their football, we filled that stadium. If we did not get there and stand in the heat and wait to get in line, we were up on the fourth or fifth level trying to see down to the f stage. There were musicians each night that the kids could listen to and that would get the kids all fired up before the worship time would begin. They would listen to you know, two or three speakers a night and give them thought to think about how God had called that individual and how they are able to serve God now, things that might help them determine their call in the future. The first night, Bishop Eaton spoke to us and talked about God's call. Through this everything, the theme was Jesus changes everything, and they could see that with the different activities they participated and opened their eyes we're in a small community here. We only took three from our congregation, but they realize that they are part of a bigger picture out there and they can contribute to this world. Thank you.
Let us confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. in faith and discipleship, we give thanks for God's merciful compassion as we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of truth, put your word of justice on our lips. Bless your church in the task of holy resistance. Make us a living, persistent sign of your righteousness and your loving kindness. Lord, in your mercy. God of heaven and earth, Pour your healing power upon our fragile earth for us and all who inherit it. Inspire the work of engineers and environmentalists who seek sustainable sources of energy, food, and clean water. Lord, in your mercy. God of salvation, bring wholeness to all your beloved children. Anoint the hands of all caregivers, nurses, doctors, therapists, hospice workers, and chaplains. Bring abundance of life to all who long for healing, especially for those we now name in our hearts or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. God of tenderness, you adopt us as your own. Help us to provide nourishing care for all children in our midst. Inspire us with their creativity and energy. Heal and protect children who are victims of abuse, neglect, or scorn. Lord, in your mercy. For all the churches of the Allegheny Synod, we particularly pray today for the assembly of St. Peter Lutheran Church of Osterberg, PA. Lord, in your mercy. God of the saints, you have claimed the faithful departed as your own and given them an inheritance and glory. Sustain us in faith until the fullness of time when you gather up all things in heaven and on earth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, we lift to you these prayers and the prayers of our hearts, trusting in your everlasting love and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
O God, as David brought up the Ark of the Covenant with much dancing and singing, we also rejoice as we offer our gifts. As the Ark held the commandments, may our gifts receive your approval. As the Ark was a sign of your covenant, let our gifts bear witness to your love. As the Ark brought hope to the people, use our gifts to bring relief to the needy. Accept these offerings in response to your graciousness, and may all who receive them find joy in new life. Amen. It was in the night in which Jesus was betrayed. Our Lord took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, our Lord took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying this cup is the cup of the new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together we're given great assurance that Christ is present with us through this bread and wine. Jesus continues to nourish our lives. Let us pray the prayer that our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come, let us eat, for now the feast is spread. Amen.
Let us rise if we're able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, host of this meal, you have given us not only this bread and cup, but your very self, that we may feast on your great love, filled again by these signs of your grace. May we hunger for your reign of justice. May we thirst for your way of peace. For you are Lord forevermore. Amen. Amen.